Hi guys, welcome to the channel again. In today's video I'm going to do a little bit of an after install tutorial. So every time I install Arch Linux there are always several things I need to take care of. For example the trim for my SSD, the Bluetooth adapter, printers and so on. So let's jump in and see how it's done. So here we are on KDE Plasma desktop and the first thing I'm going to do is to check my printer because normally it's not configured correctly. So I'm going to pull up here system settings and I'm going to click here on printers. And as you can see, I have a print service is unavailable, bad file descriptor. So it means basically the print service is not installed and is not active. So let's install it. So let me close up the window here and I'll pull up a terminal. Uh, let me enlarge here this window a little bit and I'll zoom in the font so that you can see better. There you go. And so let's type in sudo pacman dash capital S. The package we need to install is cups, very simply, and hit enter. Enter the password for the root user and hit enter. And proceed with installation by hitting enter. So it's a fairly quick installation, no problem here whatsoever. Now, if we're going to have a look again at our system settings and click on printers again, we still have the same problem. Thing is the service is installed, but it's not yet active. So we need to activate cups. How do we do this? Well, let me clean up the terminal first and then we'll type in system CTL start. And the package name is org.cups dot cups d dot service and hit enter will be asked for the root password so just enter that and hit enter now we need to also enable it so that the next time the system boots it's going to be automatically started so what we can do is pull up the same command by hitting the up arrow and replacing start with enable and we will be asked again for our root password so we'll enter this and now the system will be started when we boot the machine again. So now let's go back to the system settings here and click on printers. And as you can see, the system is now working and I have an option to add a new printer. So I have an HP printer here. So there is one package which I still need to install, which contains multiple drivers for many, many, many models of the HP printers and scanners. So I'll type in sudo pacman-s and the package name is HPLIP and hit enter and accept the installation by hitting enter. It's going to take a moment here to download the packages and install them. There you go. And now I'll go back here to the settings and click here to add a new printer. So it should recognize actually my network printer. And as you can see, I have here Office Jet. This is my printer connected to the network. So I'll just click on the printer. The address is going to be filled automatically and the port as well. And then I'll just hit next. And from here, I have a list of brands that I can choose from. Mine is an HP. So I'll just scroll down until I find mine, which is an Office Jet Pro 8610. And I can see there are two of these. So I'll just enlarge the window here a little bit so I can see. So I can choose the one with the English language or I can choose the one without. So I'll choose the one without and hit next. It doesn't matter which one you choose. You can put a name for the printer and a description if you want to. For me, it's fine like this. And then I'll click finish. And the last thing I do is configure this as the default printer because I want to make sure that when I print something, it goes directly here. So that's it for the printer, but there is still one thing I need to do. This printer is actually also a scanner. And right now there is no way I can scan anything here. So let me close up this window. And there is one package here I need still to install. Let me clean up the terminal. And because I'm in KDE, I like to use ScanLight. If you are on GNOME, you can install also Simple Scan. I'll show you this in a minute. But for the KDE, I would install sudo pacman-s scan with a K. L-I-T-E, scan light, and hit enter. Accept the installation by hitting enter. And there you go. So let's have a look at scan light. So I'll pull up my applications here, type in scan light and hit enter. It takes a moment to recognize the scanner. And as you can see, it's recognized correctly. And now I can proceed with my scanning. So I'll close this up. If you have GNOME, you can still install scan light if you like to. 
but I rather recommend you install another program with sudo pacman dash capital S and the program is simple dash scan and then hit enter. So I'm not going to install this because I have already ScanLite installed. And if you install the GNOME, the GNOME extra package, you might have simple scan already installed. If not, you can install it with this command. So I'll type in N here and hit enter. And I'm done with the printer and the scanner. Now, the next thing I want to do is to check up my Bluetooth adapter. So again, I'll pull up my settings here. And I'll scroll down to Bluetooth and click on the option here. And as you can see, it says here, no Bluetooth adapters have been found. So the reason is because the Bluetooth packages are not actually installed. So let me close this up and we are going to install them by typing in sudo pacman dash capital S and one package is blues. So blue with the Z and the second one is blues dash utils and hit enter. Accept the installation by hitting enter. And there you go. So I'll clean up the terminal. As for the print service, we need to also start the Bluetooth service and enable it so that it's going to be automatically started at boot. So we're going to start it first by typing in system CTL start Bluetooth and hit enter. We will be asked for the root password and hit enter. And now again, we pull up the same command with the up arrow and replace start with enable and hit enter. We'll be asked again for the root password. So we enter this and there you go. So the system is gonna be automatically started the next time we boot the machine. Let me close this window here and let's have a look again on our settings panel. And again, I'll scroll down to Bluetooth here. And as you can see, it says now your default Bluetooth adapter is not visible for remote devices, but it's active because I can add a new device. So if I want it to be visible to other devices, I can click on fix it and everything is going to be fine. But right now I could click on add new device. And if I have a Bluetooth device here, I will be able to connect to it. So let me close this up and I'll pull up my terminal again. And again, I make the fonts a little bigger. There you go. And the next thing I'm going to do is usually to activate the Trim service for my SSD. So Trim basically allows you to have an optimal performance on your SSD on the long term, as it kind of defragments the spaces on the SSD. So this will be useful to you if you have an SSD and not a mechanical hard drive. And in order to check if our drive is actually supported by Trim, we can type in lsblk dash dash discard and hit enter. So we have here several columns here. We have disk on, disk grand, disk max. The ones we need to look for is grand and max. If you have anything else than a zero in these two lines, it means Trim is actually supported on your system. So with a normal Linux installation, Trim is actually installed on the system, but is not activated by default. So the service using Trim in Arch Linux is called FS Trim, so File System Trim, and it's divided in two parts. We have the FS Trim service, and we have the FS Trim timer, which is actually the one we need to activate. The FS Trim service is already loaded in memory, but we need to activate the timer so that it's going to be automatically started, and it's going to perform every week a trim of your SSD. This is called periodic trim, and it's the recommended way to activate trim on your system. There is another way to activate trim with a continuous trim, which is going to basically continuously optimize your SSD. However, as also per the Arch Wiki, the continuous trim system will probably cause more freezes. So I personally prefer to use periodic trim, which is going to run weekly from the moment you activate it. And to enable it, it's fairly simple. We'll just type in system CTL enable fstream.timer and hit enter. We will be asked for the root password and we enter that. And there you go. So the next time I put the machine, the trim timer is going to be started and weekly it's going to perform an optimization on my SSD. So let me clean up the terminal. So the next step would be to install some Microsoft fonts. These fonts might be useful if you are using certain applications or if you're visiting certain website, or if you want to have some extra fonts for your LibreOffice or FreeOffice installation. So there are several ways on how to install Microsoft fonts on Arch Linux. In this video, I'm going to follow the steps to install them from the AUR, from the Arch user repository. And in order to use the Arch user repository, we need to install first Git on the system as it's not installed by default. So we can type in now sudo pacman dash capital S 
and the package is git and hit enter. Enter your sudo password and proceed with installation by hitting enter. So it's going to take a moment to download and install. There you go. And we can clean up the terminal again. Now we need to navigate to the Arch user repository. So let's pull up the browser here. And you can type in your new browser, aur.archinus.org, and you will be brought to the AUR home. And what you want to do here is to search for a package. So in my case, I'm looking for ttf-ms-fonts. And as you can see, it appears already in the dropdown. So I'm just going to click on the link here. And what I need to do now is to pay attention to this git clone URL. This is what we need. So I'm going to right click on the link and click on copy link address and then i'm going to minimize the browser because i want to go back to the terminal and now we can type in git clone and then we paste in what we copied on the browser with Control shift v and hit enter and there you go now if i type in ls to list my directories here you'll see we have a ttf-ms-fonts directory and we need to go in there so to do this, we'll type in cd space t, and then we can press tab to autocomplete and hit enter. And now we are in that directory. Now let's type in again ls to see what's in here. You can see we have only one file here is the package build. And that's exactly what we need to install the TTF Microsoft fonts. So to install the package, we type in now make pkg dash si space and then a capital P and a tab to autocomplete and then hit enter. So it's going to take a moment now to configure the package, download it and install it on the system and I'll be back when it's done. So in the middle of the install here we are asked for the password so we'll type in that and hit enter and proceed with installation by hitting enter. And there you go, the fonts are now installed. I'll clean up the terminal and close the window here. Now, I usually like to install packages from the AOR the way I showed you right now with the git clone command. However, if you prefer, there is what is called a helper, which will help you to manage also the packages from the AOR when there are new updates, exactly like Pacman does for the Arch Linux repository. So to install yay, again, we go back to the AOR website here and I'll search here yay, very simply, and click on the first result here and right click the link and click on copy link address and we can minimize this and go back to the terminal and again i'll bump this up and we can type it git clone and then with Control shift v we can paste in the link and hit enter and again typing in ls we'll see we have a yay directory there we need to go in there so we'll type in cd space y and hit tab for auto completion and hit enter and if we list again the contact, again, we have a package built there. So we'll type in make pkg dash si capital P with a tab and auto completing and hit enter. Now we enter our password and proceed with the installation by hitting enter. So it's going to take a moment to download the package and install it. And I'll be back in a second. And now proceed with the installation by hitting enter. And the installation is done. So basically now we can use yay the same way we use Pacman. So if we type in now yay dash s y y u to update the database and the packages and hit enter, you can see it, there is a line also saying searching AUR for updates. So for example, we just installed the TTF Microsoft fonts package and yay is going to check also for updates with this command. So these are the points I'm going through with a fresh Arch installation, except for yay, because I prefer to install packages from the AUR directly with Git, but that's a preference thing. If you want to use yay, it's absolutely fine. So there you go, guys. This was a little bit of an after install tutorial. I hope you find it useful. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. There are maybe some other things which I haven't covered here, which might be specific for your machine. Anyway, I want to remind you also on March 14th, we have the live stream where we will be installing Arch Linux Live. There we will go a little bit more in depth about the packages and the commands used. So I hope to see many of you there. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and sub to the channel. Subs really helps us out, guys. And again, if you have any question, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.